So first, was it always your dream to be an actress? Like when you were a little little girl, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. North Carolina, okay, I'm from Atlanta, so the Southern Connection also. So you're a little girl in North Carolina where you like, I'm gonna grow up and be Burgundy the actress, or no? Yes, I mean, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to be. I just knew I wanted to be in the industry, in the arts. Like, I grew up in a house full of people and everybody did something. My grandmother taught music. My aunt went to Juilliard. My mother was a tap dancer. So I was just around it all the time. And I always knew I was going to do something. Um, but acting has always brought me the most joy. Um, that's why I went to Howard for a musical theater because I wanted to get my education in singing, dance, and acting, and then just pick from there what I was going to do. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so it's been a long journey, obviously, since North Carolina to this point. Um, yes. Well, when do you feel like you saw, like, when was the first time you felt like you saw yourself on like television or anything or in a movie? Like, when, like you saw, like, oh my God, that's, I connect to this character, that's me. Mmm. I want to say, set it off. Oh, I, 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 okay, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking, that's not where my brain went, but okay. All those beautiful, strong, hip, young black women, and I mean, they did their thing. You know what I mean? They came together and they really did their thing. And it was just so strong and so powerful. And that style, that whole like real life, like grit, I've been, that's been my favorite genre ever since, ever since then. Okay, uh, okay. That's funny because I just did an interview with um, a YouTuber and inter entertainer, Zach Campbell, and one of the questions, he, he referenced Set It Off, and I was like, I was watched Set It Off as a child, and the, the only thing I take from that is I would never work inside of a bank ever in my life. <laughs> I don't care how hard it get on life, I just can't, I can't do it. I, it. I have like flashbacks to that movie, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do, but I can't do this. Well, Spargo, I'm sorry. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Hey, it is scary, but it was a dope. And I grew up around a house full of strong black women. So to see that, I was like, okay, I see them portraying the women that I know in my life. I come from that. I want to do that, you know? So how did you feel about when you heard about Issa Rae possibly doing a remake of it? Did you I called my, my um, agent and I was like, <laughs> um, can we send some emails? Can we, you know? Okay. But, you were like, so I want to be in the new version, basically. I'm trying to get my part. Okay. So who would you be? So of the four characters, who would you be? Jada, Queen, um, Kimberly, and or Vivica? Either Jada. I would say Jada. Okay. 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 Jada. For Kim Jada or Kimberly, but my initial thoughts, I th I paid you for Kimberly. I feel like mm -hmm. you have a, a, a vulnerability to you as an extra But something is telling me Vivica, though. I feel like you can give me that Vivica. I feel like somewhere it's in there. I feel like... I, I, I wouldn't mind what character. It would just be an honor to... You're like, just put me in a movie. You're like, I'll be the bank teller. I'll be a killer. <laughs> Who can I be? No, that's dope. That's dope. Um, I think, because we're like around the same age, so I feel like around that time growing up, there were a lot of great black television and movies. Um, like I know as a kid, I love I love the show Smart Guy with Taj Mari. Like seeing like a young black kid who was smart, his family was was, was he had a father. You know, it was like it was good content. Um, and I feel like even now we're kind of going, we're kind of seeing it come back around with more black content, more black artists in a new way and more fresh way. Um, so I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, so going back to you growing up in North Carolina, you want to be an actress or you want to be something in entertainment. You was watching Set It Off, um, <laughs> being grown, but um, <laughs> we, all, we all was grown, it's fine. Grown. But um, knowing what you know now, what would you tell Little Burgundy? I would say be patient because if it's not your time, it's, it's just not your time. It's not gonna happen how you imagine if it's not your time. So I would say be patient. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time just like, oh my gosh, what do I have to do? Why can't I just like break into the industry? Because when I was eight, um, my mother put me in this contest, this macaroni and craft macaroni and cheese contest. And I won and that was my first taste of like traveling and recording. And so imagine being eight and being like, I know what I want to do. I know I can do this. I know what I want to do. And then just 
all throughout life not really having the that not really popping out you know what i mean like having little opportunities here and there a play but not really like doing what you know you have the potential to do and even all the way up to college i was still like auditioning outside of school just trying to like find that thing that was just going to take me to the next level and it's so frustrating when you know you have it and you can do it and you have the path where you want to go but the opportunities haven't come yet but when I finally did get the opportunity to be on television and I finally got an agent and a manager, it all started to make sense. Like, I, there were so many things I needed to learn. And there were so many things I needed to experience. And I needed all of those no's, all of those dis the disappointments to make me stronger, to get my skin thick. And so I would just tell my younger self, be patient. Your time is going to come. Um, so it'll be right on time. No, definitely. I think, especially as like young people, sometimes we don't see, there's a bigger picture and we don't always see the long view. We're like, no, right now I need yes. this. Especially when you're a kid, you like, I need to be on Nickelodeon tomorrow, mom. What's yes. Tomorrow? <laughs> like I uh, never forget like watching like all that shows, shows like that. You like, I want to be on all that. I can do that. I, like, yeah. what's going on? I'm funny. I'm talented. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like you said, there's a journey to get to where you need to be, like there's a process. And you don't even realize some stuff, some stuff you really need to know until you're there. Yes. Um, Cause I think I heard someone say one time, it's better to, I guess nothing worse than having an opportunity and you not be ready for it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's, I mean, honestly, that's probably what would have happened because I didn't have an education. I didn't have experience. I didn't know people. So if the opportunity did come, I don't know. I, I don't think I would have been ready, you know? Right. Um, so growing up, um, you kind of mentioned doing plays and stuff and obviously going to Howard to study musical theater. Um, theater is a very different ball game than television. So yes. can you kind of talk about like, I guess the, well, what, what, one, what you love most about doing theater versus television and like film, um, and what things you kind of took from theater that apply. And also, I guess the biggest differences between the two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I love about theater is the time that you get to spend with your castmates. Like with TV, you come in, you do it, you go home. But with theater, every day you're practicing, you're rehearsing. You come in in the morning, you don't leave till night. You spend a lot of time with your castmates. You study together. Um, you create like this family because once you get on stage, you have this big space. And, and the chemistry between you all has to fill up the room versus in acting. The camera's this big, so the chemistry doesn't have to be so big. You know what I mean? Um, theater, you get, you, you have to be big. So the character has to be fully in your body. You're working on your voice. You're working on the choreography and movements. It's a lot of work, and you appreciate it at the end because you work so hard, but it does take a, a toll on your body in a way that television and um, film does not. Um, I prefer television and film. <laughs> <laughs> you just like all those tech rehearsals. I can't do all the tech uh -uh. rehearsals. It, it has a toll on your body. And don't be in a musical because <laughs> your throat goes out, your knees are sore. You know Listen, what I mean? I did one, I was um, in someone's um, choreography show, Chris A. Howard, and they asked, I was in school to see, and they asked, can you, I know you dance, can you be in my, I said, sure, you know, whatever. The rehearsals, the tech, I said, I gotta go home. I gotta go back down the hill. I can't be here all day with y'all. We will get notes, and they're like, oh, actually, we'll do the show three more times. I'm like, wait, three more times? Okay. Another thing is just like so much work is just in and out. And and also with TV, like with theater, you never get to see your work. Like you, you get up there every night and you do it, but you never get to see what you're doing. You never get to study yourself and like oh i can do this better next time because i see what it looks like but with tv you get to enjoy everything that you've done and you get to watch yourself you know what i mean so i think that's but is that better or worse because in a sense i guess it's tv you get to think well in theater you don't have that you can't watch yourself but in a way it's like a blessing because you can't criticize yourself the same way with tv True, where yeah. you're like watching yourself like dang why i blink like that why, why is my hair like there's so many other things you think about Yes, I, I I like watching myself. Okay. I like studying it and just taking notes and um, just trying to make myself better, you know? So I enjoy that. I think I think that's a gift from TV that you get to see it. Okay. Now on the flip side, you talk about how 
how um, strenuous theater is, but I don't think people really, like, with me previously working at, like, behind the scenes on TV, I don't think people realize how, like, much goes into making a television show. People think, we, oh, yeah. we show up, smile, all right, everybody go home. But if there's long hours, production hours, there's so much that goes to those 60 or 30 minutes episodes. Yeah. No, that's that's true. It's a lot that goes into it. But I think as far as the rehearsals and as far as the practice, um, for, as an actor, because I can't speak for behind the scenes, because they be <laughs> moving. They be moving. I be scared to, like, say hey to people, because it's just like, they <laughs> up and... I'm just like, y'all doing the hard work. You're you like, know? where's my mark? I stand right, stand right here. Right. Okay, I'm good. Hey, yes, can I get a little bit more lipstick? Okay, I'm good. Y'all do y'all thing. But the rehearsals, the rehearsals for TV, it's like right before. Let's rehearse, let's get it right, right quick. For theater, Okay, month. so as an, as an actress, um, like you said, you, theater, you have time to really sit with the material. You're really like, with your cast, y'all have building this chemistry because at, at the end of the day, you'll be on stage. And like you said, flip that room. Versus a lot of the time in TV, depending on your writer, your writer's room, the schedule, you might get that new script the week before. Yep. And depending you on how many scenes you're in, that could change. So how does that work as an actor? Like crafting your, I guess your, um, your um, toolkit as an actress um, to kind of play into TV versus um, theater, like studying your lines, getting into character, those things. Well, I mean, that's kind of how theater has been helpful for TV. Even though you get a lot more time with theater, if you know how to craft a character, if you know how to really dig in there and bring out everything that needs to be brought out off the page, you can do it in TV. You got to do it quickly. You know what I mean? But that that theater work, how, how deep we dive into the characters and the history and all those things, that has really helped um, in television and film. But you just got to be quick. It takes practice, you know? You got to be quick. You got to be on your toe. You got to be ready for anything. There's times I've, I've gone to my trailer and the lines are different and we shoot that day. But you take what you learned in theater, you take what you learned in school and you just go, you just apply it. Or even I've, I've been in a situation where working like in the, in the in production where they're like, we're pulling this thing up. We need y'all to run those new sides. I'm like, okay. We, we, now it's a whole new scene. You wasn't even it's, prepared to do today. You're like, all right. Uh, after Friday day, okay. Let me yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No, but I definitely, I like to see, I think cause a lot of times traditional actors, you know, you start in like theater and then sometimes you stay there and you transition into um, um, film work and TV work. But then I'll really, really realize, realize there's like a big difference between the two. They both have their own pros and cons. Um, but you also did musical theater. So when can we expect you to be our next Broadway star? Like, we need... Okay, I want to go back to theater because I love theater and I think it makes you stronger. <laughs> but there aren't a lot of opportunities to sing and dance on TV. I mean, it comes, you know, but not, not as much as in theater. But I just think TV just has me full right now and I'm not ready to go back into theater. I'm not. I'm I'm really, really enjoying this journey. Because yeah. even down to we think theater, you're behind the scenes, you know, you're makeup a lot of the time. Like you don't you're doing the whole thing. Versus yeah. TV, you walk to the trailer, you sit down, they make you pretty, you go do your lines and go home. I I will honestly say I'm full. <laughs> I I can't admit that. You'll you'll be back soon to theater. I, I feel that. Because once you once you have that taste, it's like it's like you say it's a different feeling. You have the audience yeah. right there too. It's like there's oh, a, yeah. it, it feels different in your body. Yeah. Um, if I got the opportunity to work in theater, I would go in a heartbeat. I would. In anything. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to turn nothing down because it's theater or television, but just really enjoying TV right now. Well, there's, it's a journey, so I feel like it'll come. It'll, when it's right, it'll come. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one thing I definitely want to talk to you about, um, well, obviously there's so much going on in the world right now, just in general. <laughs> There's always been a lot of stuff going on, but at in this very moment in time as we talk, it's like the world is imploding on itself three times over. Yes. Um, and I saw some, an article recently someone posted like on my Instagram feed, and it had like a it was like two categories. It was like the most essential jobs right now and the least essential jobs. Ironically, every job I've ever had is in the least essential. Um, but in the top was artists, and as someone who went to um, college to study like um, theater. And even me studying communications and film, there's always been a conversation where, where it's like, 
is that gonna get you a job after college? But like, what will you do as a as? A, whoa, my dog. Okay, my dog scared me. As an um, entertainer, how do you feel about that? Um, well, do you feel, that's like, good. Do you feel like you're? Uh, I guess you're. You made the right decision. Do you feel like that's val a valid truth? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's very dis. I'm surprised to hear that that was you know. Though that were essential, okay, I understand. We we need doctors and nurses and you know activists right now. There's, there's so many people that we need right now, but because of the pandemic, um, and because of you know not everybody's not out protesting. Some people are afraid to go out because everything's going on. A lot of people are turning to entertainment. You know, you're listening to music. You're on social media. You're catching up on shows. You're binge watching stuff, and if that wasn't there, what would you be doing? And also a lot of artists, I mean, who are you listening to? Because at this time, artists are supposed to be speaking about what's going on in the world and creating art that reflects what's going on in the world. And that's a part of um, advocacy. That's a part of educating people. So if we didn't have artists at this time, I don't know how a lot of people would have their entertainment and how a lot of people would get information in a creative way. Um, yeah, I definitely think I made the right decision. I mean, there's something that everybody is supposed to do and there's a message that everybody has that they should share with the world. And I think this is the way that I'm supposed to share messages is through art. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, and I think two people kind of discredit the impact that art has on people as far as like our consciousness as not just black people, just people in general. And I, I said all that to say and set that up to my next point is you being not just a black artist um, and actress, but a brown skin, dark skin, black artist. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, those it's a different things right, right now. Because we have a lot of conversations online. People talk about, you know, production companies or a TV show, who, who have you may say, we, we have black talent, we have black artists, but a lot of times, especially when it comes to our female actresses, they're of a lighter skin complexion. They might mm -hmm. be a little bit racially ambiguous. Like there's, there's, there seems to be a lot of that, especially in terms of like leading black women. Mm -hmm. You might see a dark skin friend in the corner, you know, she a part of the friend group, she had one few lines, but when we look at like the love interest, those main characters, we don't really see a lot of, um, dark skinned women yeah yeah um i mean they sort of prepared me for that in school it was not something that we didn't talk about it was not something that you know they tried to act like it, it didn't exist they you know prepared me for that um i've seen it i've seen when um other people have been more talented other people have fit the part more, but the only thing was they were dark skinned. And so someone else was given the role. Uh, it's, it's very sad. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what we got to do to come to a place where it doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I, I understand the history behind it, but it doesn't make sense to me. And I don't know what we have to do to come to a place where we can accept all colors, but we have to get to that place. We I, mean, have I think to. it definitely starts with, well, one casting. Like you said, let's see a, a, a brown skin love interest. Let's see, what does that look like? Because we know brown skin girls are falling in love every day. Like, I, yeah. like the, I guess, especially, I think it's different to being a part of the community where I look at stuff, I'm like, you, you see, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my aunt. Like you, we connect in a different way. It doesn't feel like just a random character on the page, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And we know we all come in different shades. And our, even in your own family, you have the lightest of the light to the dark to the yeah. dark. And sometimes they sit. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I think it just kind of starts with seeing that Im imagery. And I think that's why even art is so much impactful, because we consume that. That's what we see um, before anything. You really perceive your notion of the world by the um, things you see on television. Like, I'll never forget. As you know, like Howard has a lot of like um, international students, and one of my friends, he's um, Indian, and he posted on like Snapchat like a few years ago. He was like, "I always wanted Chuck Taylors," and he had took a picture. And I was like, "Chuck Taylors, like, okay." But he was like, growing up in India, every time they show American movies, all the kids had Chuck Taylors on, and you, you don't even realize like 
those little things that people like internalize or ingrain in themselves. So even something as simple as seeing like um, black love on television, that impacts you in a different way as a kid growing up and the perceptions we kind of, I guess, take into the world. Um, I like so what I can, you said though. It starts ahead. with, and, I like, and, and also the writers, the writers have to write that in. You know what I mean? Write in that she's dark skinned, write in that she's black with full nose and full lips. Write it in. It's you know? funny you said that I listened to a podcast maybe a few weeks ago about like writing and things like that. And one of the notes someone said was, as black writers, we have to specify that. Because think about it, a lot of times in the industry, it's not many people of color or black people. And if I'm reading your script, I'm going to read it through my lens. Unless mm -hmm. I specifically say, Burgundy is a chocolate brown girl with long, flowy, kinky hair. No, no one's, no one's going to see that. They're going to say, oh, Burgundy, okay, she has blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, she, might <laughs> be, she might be Burgundy. <laughs> we didn't hear Burgundy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to really specify that, unfortunately. Or even... I know Tyler Perry to talk with Oprah a few years ago. I'm um, talking about, it's not just about, we don't have a lot of black characters, we don't have a lot of black writers. And we write what we know. And it's kind of, and it's true in the sense, like when I write a mother, I have a black mother, that's who I, that's who I see. I have mm -hmm. black friends, I have black brothers, I have a black father. Versus if I'm white, I'm writing a white mother, a right. white sister, a white neighbor. I might have a black friend, so I'm like, there's one black friend, so, right. and he's my coworker. So it's like we have to kind of diversify behind the scenes as well before we can see the see the fruits of the labor in front of the camera. That I like that. I like that. But one thing I think I think that's why I think I love the shot so much. Going into that direction, it's since season one, like when I first saw, like I think that pilot was amazing. First off, obviously like with Lena Waithe coming into like her um, own as a creator and her being like a big name around that time, it's like okay, she has let's check out this show. And I saw the pilot, and I was like, oh, this is, this is it. Like, the pilot alone, I felt like it was almost like a short movie. Like, it felt like there was a beginning and an end. And we could have ended there, but it was so much more to tell with these characters. Um, so how did you even get involved with the shot? Okay, so after Howard, after I graduated from Howard, I didn't know where to go, what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to do TV and theater but dc really doesn't have a lot of tv it's just mainly theater everybody was going to either new york or la and i felt like new york was just way too much way too fast and i felt like la was, was kind of like my end goal like that's where i wanted to end up because la is very competitive that's where all the actors go so i needed kind of something in between something that wasn't new york and something that wasn't la and a friend told me to try chicago and I visited for a little while, and they had a good mix of TV and theater. Wasn't too fast, wasn't too competitive. Um, I was welcomed really fast in the Chicago arts community. So I stayed. I moved to Chicago, and I stayed. And um, then the audition for The Shy came out. Audition for The Shy came out, and I actually... I was so hyped because I was reading these characters, and I was like, I know these people. I know these people and I'm not from Chicago, but I've been there long enough to know the lingo and know what they were looking for in all of the characters. And when it really comes down to it, yes, it's about the shy. Yes, it's the culture of Chicago. But what it really comes down to is just black. It's just black. And I knew that all I knew that up and down. So I was so excited about auditioning for it. I actually auditioned for um, Jerica. Okay. I can, see, I, I can see that, actually. No, I, I can see that. And I didn't get it. I didn't get called back or anything. I was just like, man, I just really wanted to be a part of this shot. So maybe if they do, like, a little small role, I can audition for that. I kind of just, like, let it go. Then the audition for Keisha came in. And I was like, oh, okay. I thought I knew who Jerrica was, but I really knew who Keisha was. Jerrica was a little more mature, you know, and – um. Keisha was just kind of, I really, I just really knew who she was. It, it and wasn't can we that. talk about that though? How you being, although being a young adult, playing a high school kid? Because you, you could pass for a high school kid. Like you, you, sometimes we see cast and it's like, she looked too grown. But you really, you look like you could be, like, she's like 16, 17 around yeah. that area. So you, you fit in right into that bucket too. Yeah, I felt like I knew her better. And my, my teenage years were so prominent. Like I just, the things she was saying and her attitude, I was like, I've, I've, I've been there. It wasn't too long ago that I was there. So I really connected with Keisha. And I went in and I did the audition. And um, 
there were actually two scenes, but I was only given one scene. And so I did the scene and they were like, okay, you ready for the next scene? And I was like, I don't have it. They, y'all, they only gave me one scene. And they were like, you need to go home. Do, they're going to give you the second scene, go home, study it, and come back tomorrow and do it because you have the right look. Yes. Okay, but how, I want to know as an actress, how often do you feel like that happens though? Where you get that grace from a casting agent? They're like, go home and try that, try again. You never know what you're going to get from casting. You never know what you're going to get. I always go in expecting to not get anything. Because sometimes you could do, you can blow away, you got tears in your eyes, you could be sweating on your armpits, and they say thank you, and that's it. <laughs> and so I never know what to expect, but. I, I worked with a coach before I went in and auditioned for Keisha. Like, I, I really wanted this, and, and I felt like I was ready for this. And so I wasn't surprised when she said, good job. But she told me to come back, and I was like, oh, my gosh, now I really got to blow it out because you've given me this opportunity to show you more. So I worked with the coach again, and I came back the next day, and, and I did it. And, it. and not too long after that, I heard that I got the part. And I was thinking because – when I came in the first time and she was like, I want you to come back because you have the right look. I didn't know if she just meant like I looked young or I didn't know what she meant. I don't know what she, what she meant. But now I realized, because everybody is saying it all the time, I look just like Alex. <laughs> I look just like the play who plays my brother. You guys, you guys do actually like, that's another thing. I love that too, the fact that we see this like chocolate family in a way. Like, yes. It's beautiful. I, one that's like, Kevin and your Kevin and your character, they're both like essential to the story of this whole thread of uh, of characters. But I like this like I same going back to that same thing, like those dark skin, dark hues, chocolate kids that exist in the real world being no, put on the forefront. And being seen as a even your like the you have two moms on the show. That's a different dynamic we don't really see. It, yeah. I go on and on about this, but she you, know, <laughs> you, you get the point. Yeah, yeah. But that's like going back to talking about being dark skinned and then that experience, it really worked in my favor. It really worked in my favor. I can't see Keisha being anything other than, you know, uh, what I mean, can we imagine they popped a, a random light skin girl in this? Like, okay, y'all, y'all really was trying to But no, I like, I think that's important though. I really like it also to the thing we sometimes people try to use against us is what becomes our our asset a lot of times. Yes, I said that I, I did an interview yesterday, well, a podcast, and I, I said that it was one of those moments where I was like, the way God made me, the, the thing that is supposed to be a negative worked in my biggest favor. They said so, you got the look. She said, I'm coming back tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so as the, the, show, the show first started, obviously Keisha is like Kevin's sister. First of all, can I just say, I've never, we've seen Keisha run track maybe one time. On look, the show. Look, 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 let me tell you something. <laughs> you gonna see Keisha run this next season. Because okay. last season she was fake running and she had a boyfriend. <laughs> not fake running, not fake running. <laughs> she said, we want, I'm going to track practice. Really, she was track coach. That's only she was going to the uh, track practice. But um, we, she, she's had a, a smaller role. We see her as obviously his big sister. Um, obviously, Emmett has some type of romantic thing going on with her, but he got his own. Mm -hmm. Other set of women, also. But then the new poster for this season drops, and Keisha is in the front of the cover. Like everybody else is to the side, you're dead centered. Like with these flowers, beautiful. I love that poster, by the way. Um, and it has the tagline "Innocence, Innocence Laws, Redemption Found." So is Keisha on the come up this season? Like, like what's going on? You went. She went from being not going to track practice to being <laughs> in the front of the cover. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. Like you said, season one and even season two, we would just see. I'm sorry. This is, sorry, my mama calling. Um, we, we would see Keisha just pop in, say something, you know, and pop back out. And I remember seeing on social media after season one, beginning of season two, people saying, I hope they bring out more stories for the women. And, um, that's happening now, you know, and I'm, I'm just honored to be, to, to tell the story from a female perspective. Uh, like I said, it's, it's been a journey and, and Keisha was never fully discovered. I don't think we, she was familiar. We, we identify with her. 
We liked her. She was a brother, a girlfriend, a daughter, an athlete, a student. But we never really got to know her the way we got to know some of the other characters. So I just think it's, it's, it's Keisha's turn, you know? Um, the topics that will be brought up season three are things that I think really needed to be talked about. And I think they could only be shared through a female voice. And so I think it was just time. Was just and I time. think if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, to your point, a lot of the narratives have been based like from the male perspective. So you get like Kevin and all the other like adult males that you kind of see their viewpoint and the women that they, they aren't necessarily background, but they are almost like a beat, a beat pop beat plot line a lot of the times. Um, but I think Keisha is the only, I guess, leading teenage, teenage girl, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cause I, I, um, like a big show, obviously growing up for me was like Degrassi. And mm-hmm. I saw an interview with, um, I think her name is Andrea Lewis who played, who played, hey, hey uh, Andre Lewis, who played Hazel, had an interview kind of talking about in retrospect about how like she felt like being obviously she's one of the only black girls on the show, and talking about how she kind of felt like she remember going to the writers as a teenager and be like, "Hey, I I, I could do more." Like Hazel was always like the best friend. Like I'm just kind of here as a black friend. Wearing, she never got full story. Nothing that's a lot of times true for like we talked about earlier, like black girls particularly. We see a lot of black women led stuff. We don't really see like that, those black teenagers for, for young girls and what that looks yeah. like. Because there's so yeah. much happening between yeah. 13 and like 18. There's like a lot of things that are happening we never really see from like black girls. Yes, yes. And then when you talk about Chicago, I mean, they make up a big part of the culture of Chicago. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I think it was time to dive into the young black female voice. And even I think as a viewer and a fan, I ain't going to lie. Y'all killed, y'all killed a lot of people last season, one. And then, yeah. obviously, a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that happened, a lot of the actors aren't returning. I'm like, damn, so I'm like, so what's going on, Sha? Y'all know. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm a faithful watcher. I was going to watch it regardless. And I was, I was kind of sad, and I was like, man, y'all done killed a lot of people. People ain't coming back. What's go-? Like, how can this show kind of stay afloat? To your point, a lot of the narratives have been from those perspectives, too. So it's like, as a viewer, we only know these sides of the story. So how can we shift? So how do you feel like you guys did this season as far as the shit? I know it's pre- it premiere Sunday. Well, but by the time this airs, the season will have already premiered. This this will premiere next Friday. So see, episode one will have already come out. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. So I mean, I'm wondering if I can say more than I've been saying. Okay, this is gonna come out Friday. Also, ne- this Friday coming up. And also, I literally before we started, I saw on I think it's on the Showtime YouTube they uploaded episode one. I was like, dang, I should have watched it. I was like, dang. <laughs> I was like, I would see it uh, like uh, 20 minutes before the interview because I definitely would have watched it. I would have had those questions. But um, but yeah, that was a, a, a side note, an amendment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think like you said, so much went on behind the scenes that sometimes, unfortunately, when things happen, you got to just shift everything. And I think they did a great job of changing um the change in the narrative but keeping it the shy um and you just looking at the poster board y- you'd be like what this girl that was in the back whoa you know what i mean it was a it was a big jump and um i think it does have a lot to do with you know the um unfortunate things that happened behind the scene but i think it was good time and i think it all lined up because women right now feel hurt Black women feel like we feel ignored. This season is definitely going to speak out. That black time women. is everything. Like you said, time is everything. Black, in the midst of everything happening, like you said, there's a lot of conversation about protecting black women, black women voices. Like, we, like, black women love, we, they always, well, you guys always advocate for black men when things are happening, but the reciprocity isn't always seen. And sometimes the hurt or trauma is projected by black men a lot of times, too. So I, I'm very excited to kind of see this new women-led um, season. I'm just excited for the show. I, I mean, like, y'all come out every summer, so I'm like, this is my summer show. I want you to know that. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of this time, a lot of shows go on, like, hiatus, like, nothing really on TV that much, but the shy come, like, clockwork. Yes. So every <laughs> summer. And I need, like, 10 more seasons. I need to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
breaking, so I'm not going back to theater, y'all. I need, I need this show to keep going. I can't go back to theater. <laughs> no, but I've definitely, like, loved to see the journey. Like, my favorite character has definitely... The boys are hilarious. Like, Papa, Kevin, Jack, that dynamic, it brings levity to the show. Like, there's a lot of dark stuff that happens, but they... I think you get to see, like, you, you, we don't see it often, but, like, Black kids and Black youth and Black joy. Like, yes, they're in this, quote-unquote, like, um crazy city where everything's happening for like for black people but they're still kind of trying to hold on to that that innocence in a way and we see them kind of have to like fight that with even like kevin you know you guys saw Shaw, you guys father on the show um last season then jake has his whole we gonna pray for jake you said pray yeah. for jake. Pray and then for jake. Papa, papa, papa just gonna give you the good the good jokes here for the yeah. jokes and i love it um so how do you feel like you guys' character, like what, specifically you and Kevin's character. What's what is what, what is this young man's real name? I keep I keep saying I see the character in my head. What's his real name again? Alex. You said, Alex. Alex. Okay, there we go. I'm like, I see Kevin when I see him. I'm like, that's Kevin. That's that's <laughs> Keisha brother, y'all. That's Kevin right there. But um, how do you feel like you guys have grown this season as like brother and sister? Because I think oh I God. saw a preview. You guys kind of touched on it similar, like the same, like the, I guess the residue, the residue of like losing your father going into this next season. Yes, it, it's, it's a, a big difference. Um, I think season one and season two, I was kind of like his little mom. I mean, some scenes where, you know, we'd be walking and say something be like, boy, you need to, like just telling him straight up, you know. And um, this season, some things will happen. And I, it'll flip. I okay. will... I will depend on him a little bit, a little bit more. Um, this season definitely shows more of our. We're gonna have flashbacks. Um, Come on, flashbacks! Yeah, so you'll definitely see a lot more of our relationship. Uh, another big part of Keisha's character is the lovely Emmett, who played by Jacob Lattimore, and that whole. It's not really even. I don't know what they're called. Like, he liked her. She kind of she liked him when she wanted to like him. <laughs> What's going on with uh, Keisha and Emma? I saw you posted a clip on your social, like that beautiful moment of you guys, yeah. like at, at like a harbor or a lake. I'm like, so they back. To get, like, What's going on with y'all? What's going on? Okay, I would say that clip defines our relationship for season. It defines it. They there's history there, so they can be open and they can be honest with each other. But they're nothing more than friends. They're really there for. Each other. I mean. I've got tears in my eyes in that scene. He's being honest with me. He asked me questions about my future. Like they are really, really love each other from from a, a friend standpoint. And it happens like that sometimes. You know, you think you like somebody, and then it's like, okay, you came in my life different. You know, right. so um, yeah, that's. I mean, they need to just stay friends. He don't need no more kids. No. He has no children. <laughs> And um, as I guess you kind of, it, it kind of is alluded in that scene that you know obviously Keisha she apparently she running track again because she's talking about track so maybe she is really going to track practice and got scholarships I don't know <laughs> we'll find out this season maybe she'll <laughs> run this season we don't know um, so clearly she has like a future for her like I'm I, one thing I love about the shots too is the idea that you got every kick represents somebody different there's different lanes some people bring you hope and you're optimistic for them while some people you're just praying. They make it to the next episode because you just never know. And I think one thing about your particular character's family unit is that that levity and that joy, if that makes sense. Like, yes, there's trauma and pain that happens for everyone, each of us, but there's a very, like, much groundedness for you guys. Like, Jake, not Jake, sorry. Um, Kevin's character, he's even more, like, within a friend group, I'm like a voice of reason in a way. Like, you could tell he was raised right. He don't always <laughs> act right. But he had, the parents instilled something into him. And I think you guys represent that as far as you guys' um, family on the show. In juxtaposition to, like, you see, like, Jake's family, where there really is no family. He has Ridge. Um, you saw, like, Papa's character. Then previously, you had, like, Jericho's character and all those things happening. So I think there's a good balance between everybody um, yes. that you guys do. You guys do really well. Like I said, I'm a fan of the show. I really, like, love it. Um, so I have a few more questions, and we're going to wrap this thing on up. Okay. Um, so my whole show, the whole show is about not just talking to black people and black voices, but really just show, talking more beyond our public traumas that people know as people try to place on black people. Like we have everyday lives, you know, we have parents, we have families, we laugh, we cry. Like there's more to 
blackness than bodies in the street. Like that's the, that's a, a sad part of our like experience, but we are more than that. We're better than that. There's, I go on and like, it's just, you know, as being a fellow HBCU graduate, you know, like the beauty and the array, the diversity of, of this thing. We call black men. Um, so I have a lightning round of questions for you. Um, so the first one is, what do you love most about black people? Oh, I can't just say one thing. Hold on. I can't just say one thing. <laughs> uh, our creativity. I feel like we are the pioneers of everything. Um, I love, we have this thing where even in sadness, even through hard times, we will find a way to laugh. Oh, Black Twitter's gonna have a joke for you. Well, we gonna have, we gonna have <laughs> a joke, a laugh, something. We just have this thing where we might not have pulled completely out of it, but we're finding strength from somewhere to have some glimpse of hope, some sort of joy, and we spread that to each other. It's like, it's nothing like being Black. I, we, we couldn't explain it. If, if, if we tried, we couldn't explain it. And it's something that only we share. You know what I mean? We show other cultures and we show the world, but it's just a thing. It's just like a it thing that all of us have, and it stays just within us. And it's, it's, it's really beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I would say um, our creativity, our strength, our ability to laugh, everything. Those are probably my, my top two, top two okay. favorites. Um, who is a black person you want to shine a light on today? A black person I want to shine a light on? Hmm. That's a good question. A black person I want to shine a light on, let me think. And it could be somebody famous, but not famous, when you just cold, dear to your heart, anybody. Let me think about that one. Let me think, let me come back okay. to that one. Okay. okay. Um, what you got, you answered this one kind of already, but you have to give me a different one this time. So, what is your favorite black movie or TV show? I love Martin. I okay. watched Martin over and over and over. I love Martin. I think I like how I was just watching it the other night, and I was watching the episode um, with when he was uh, Sunflower. And he went in this cult, and it was hilarious. But I'm still thinking to myself like. No, there really are cults out here that, you know, some of the things that he touched on in that episode are things that are really happening and things that are not okay, but he made it. He made it he funny. Made it fun. I just thought <laughs> so creative. I think that's what comedy is when, you, is when you take true things and find a way to twist it so that it's actually funny and you forget for a second that... Oh, that's real. Hold on. <laughs> it's hilarious. And Martin was a genius and my favorite part about the show was um the supporting cast they supported him like they were so true to their characters that it made it made martin even funnier i, I don't know how to explain it but the way gina supported him i mean those were some real supportive actors and um i just thought it was beautiful the 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 wardrobe um if I just, I love Martin. I think it's one of the best ever. All right, later the Martin reboot, we go call Breaking Need for the Robe. She coming. She Look. said, Martin got a daughter. Here we go. I'm here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favorite lyric or song by a Black artist? Ooh. Oh, my goodness. These are some good questions. Um, okay, there's this song by Cake. I know okay. this. Okay. But he has this song. And it goes, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, don't stop. Grind hard till you hit the top. One day your shit gonna pop. One day your shit gonna pop. And it just goes back to when um, I was telling you, like, just the stress of being like, I know I can do this. I know I have what it takes to do this, but why haven't I done it yet? And just the patience, um, the patience that it takes to get to where you need to be in for the time and to line up. So, yeah, I, I would, I, I love that song. Okay, okay. Um, what is your hope for black people? My hope for black people is justice. My hope for black people is um, to stop dying in the streets. 
I mean, my hope for black people is that we will be seen in different lights. And like you said, not just, uh, not just, not just as bodies, you know, what you see on the news. Um, my hope for black people is that this thing that we're on where we're protesting and we're calling in to governor's office and calling mayors and um, create, and I hope that that never stops. I hope that even um, if and when police brutality gets better, um, that we continue to, to do that because our history is what it is. And, and, I, and I don't want that to ever be forgotten. I don't want us to ever sleep on ourselves, on our culture and, all that we can be. So I hope that what we're doing now, it just grows and it gets, it gets bigger. Okay. So now we got to go back to your black person. You go shine that light on. Oh God. Okay. Um, I would like to shine a light on my daughter. Okay. How old is your daughter? She's five. Okay. And she see mom, mommy on TV every every season of the show, killing it. So I know she's proud. <laughs> yes, I would like to shine a light on her. Um, it's 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 a, a really scary and tough thing to be a mom at this time to be a mom of a, of a little black girl. Um, so I'm trying my best to just uh, raise her right and teach her to love herself and um, love who she is as a, as a black woman, as a woman. And um, she's very mature to, to have a mom that's um, back and forth, all over, uh, busy and young. Um, she, she handles that very, very well for her age. So I want to shine a light on my daughter. I love it. Okay, <laughs> last one. What brings you black joy? What brings me black joy? Being around my black family, um, eating black food, watching black TV, listening to black music, dressing like a black girl, wearing my hair like a black girl, um, talking black slang, uh, talking about being black right now, talking to another black person about black creativity, um, living fully in being black is a very special thing. And I think it wasn't until I became an adult that I realized that it's a difference between just being black and living fully in your blackness. You know what I mean? Going into a room with white managers and white agents and truly being yourself and, and educating them on how you feel as a black woman. Um, that brings me black joy. No, definitely. Like, even with this show and creating this, um, like, our staff is definitely um, diverse and everything like that. Um, and we have, like, a Black founder that helped with our company. But even still, I'm like, when it came time to, like, pitch content, I'm like, okay, I want to do a Black show. That's what, I, that's what I care about. And, like, Black right. people were like, it's weird to kind of be like, so I'm the Black guy on staff. I want to do a Black show. It feels, but then, like, with everything happening, I'm like, I have to do this. That's like, good. I have to be that voice, especially like you said, using our platforms as creatives, as um, artists, storytellers. This is how you shift the shift the narrative. This is how you make change through your work. So I was like, I would be remiss if I didn't do this. Um, but thank you, Burgundy, for joining me on this today. Um, you, it it's a lovely talking to you. Like I love it. I, I when I love seeing black people win, I love seeing black power people win. I'm talking yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother, like, just a whole nother topic, right? But, um, so the shot airs every Sunday on, on Showtime. Um, can you let us know where we can follow you, what other things you're going to be doing in the near future that we can look out for? Yes. Um, I just did a short film, and it dropped on YouTube today. It's called I saw Sir. that. I saw that. Uh, yep, I saw it. Yeah, it's about human trafficking, so... You can just watch, um, support that. Um, the writer and director is also from North Carolina. So, um, yeah. And, of course, The Shy. And um, I just did a film called The Last Shift. So you can look that up. Uh, Tuscaloosa is coming to Cannes Festival this year. I don't know when the festival is, but if you just... Look up Kane's Festival, C-A-N-N-E-S. I have a small role in Tuscaloosa. And that's it. Through this time, I'm going to be trying my best to 
create, you know, so you could just follow me on Instagram. It's my name, Burgundy Baker, B-I-R-G-U-N-D-I. And that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.